Hello there, so let's work in this tutorial now for compressible flow. So I will show you a new option, new, new sense, and how to set up the case that is relatively easy. So we're still here with the cylinder case, you see that I love this case. So we're going to run a supersonic case, okay, so we're going to compute shockwave and everything. Just to show you a few things to set up the this case more into this top down boundary condition we know how to set that but also and something interesting when post-processing these kind of problems uh to visualize the chart wave you can use now what is now watch leading contours now which is the gradient of density or you can use also the shadow graph numerical shadow graph with this the Laplacian of density or the divergence of the gradient. Okay, so these are the, the most commonly methods used to, to capture shock waves. What you can use Mach number, or whatever. Okay, but usually these methods are nice. Probably also instead of working linear scale, you can use logarithmic, log logarithmic scales just to see if it seems better. Any case, uh, to show you that, then we're going to use the solar drop pimple phone or the compressible float, but with transonic corrections. Okay, so maybe we already in tutorial one we use it. We didn't mention about this correction, but also we use it for low speed flows, okay, without this correction, okay. The only difference now is you want to work with high speed shock wave and stuff like that. You need to enable in the pimple block of the FV solution this correction, trans transonic yes, which is by default uh, set to no. Okay, so when you put it like this, you're going to add, add some corrections and now you will be able to, drop, to solve no high speed flows also you will need to set the the physical properties in the dictionary constant thermophysical properties and boundary initial conditions for the for the t field okay addition and out stuff like turbulence model wall functions on and so on uh so there is also a new dictionary that you will see in the in the folder system called sb constraints okay so these are let's say that this is still uh, these are uh source terms okay but they put it now developers here specifically in FB constraint. So what you do here is to constrain the variables that you are solving to some some values. Okay, in this case we are constraining these variables to minimum and maximum values. And this is very use, useful when you are dealing you now with compressible flows. So for instance, see that we're putting this limited li limit here in the pressure. So using this mean factor 0 0.1, 10, then limit in in temperature cannot be more than a thousand Kelvin and less than a hundred Kelvin and also for magnet velocity magnitude. Okay. So as you're curious, you want to know all the options that you have here, you have the source code. So basically for this limit pressure, what you're doing in this case, you can also define minimum and maximum. And this is helpful. No, as I say here, especially during the, the, the startup of the simulation to stabilize the solution. These are modifi uh, modifiable runtime modifiable so you can set it on off or change these values there, there is no problem but something that be be careful because you use values too conservative or unrealistic you are forcing the solution to to unrealistic behavior uh for instance for if you use this mean factor for pressure what you are doing is something like this it will take for the minimum pressure the maximum between the pressure the calculated one and the and the pressure times this mean factor okay so it will take that one and this is helpful now because sometimes it might happen that you can get let's say values of pressure in the order of a hundred pascal and that is that is unrealistic that will give you a problem so what you do is adding this this kind of, of limits okay the same for for temperature okay so especially now you will see that some cases during a start -out, temperature may, may go crazy like 2000 kelvins and that might give you a stability problem so you put this limit but you have to be careful okay so i know that in my case the, the this is a good value but if you put like 400 kelvin here you know that you are limiting everything and you are forcing to another be uh, to, to, to another behavior not your solution and the same you do for, for the velocity. By the way, you can use this with any solver, okay? So probably from time to time, you will see some, 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 some simulations, some tutorials that, that we have this SV constraint uh, dictionary, and in particular, we're putting this limiting in velocity, no? But sometimes it can happen when you start to run the simulation, and in particular with the steady cases, that you are going to have peaks of velocity, stuff like 200 meters per second, which is not realistic. In particular, if you have low inlet velocity. So you put this in 100, you limit it, and you know that this will add just in the initial iterations and then it will stabilize. So I strongly recommend it to put this limit limits, okay? And you can realize about that when you need it, when you are monitoring minimum and maximum values, no? 
So that's all. Okay, so let's look at this uh, tutorial. So I go here and you have it here. You go again, as you saw the advanced physics compressible and we're working in this one. Okay, so usually let's say in constants, see that we have these dictionaries. Okay, so here you have the dictionary commented. We're going to open this. So Turbulence is set in the same, in the usual way and see that consistently we're using the K omega SST, which is the best one. And see that here, thermophysical properties, where you define your properties. And in this case, we're using transport constant. Okay, so we're going to read this, <clears throat> this, these values. See that we're defining here the actual value for air and in this case for 20 and 20 Celsius. But if you want to use another model for the viscosity, you can put, for instance, Sutherland so, so, so model. Then see that for energy, we're using this formulation. This is the one I often use. It's up to you to pick up one, but it shouldn't be much a difference between one or the other. So as you go into system, you will see that SV skin, these are the variables that you're solving, K and H, okay, for sensible enthalpy, okay, K, K and H. Turbulent quantities is exactly the same. And see that for velocity, now linear in wind okay so these are also related to the energy equation okay so these are common for all the formulations and this is specific for each equation but the rest is pretty much the same so see also for the solvers is pretty much the same okay and pay attention that density here we're using back substitution remember that it's the pressure one so as soon as you have you know your enthalpy or whatever you get density like this with the equation of of state now so that is a small solver to solve and here in the pimple see that you have this auction transonic so you enable this if you have uh, high speed flows always recommend it consistent and see that in this case i know that this is a a tricky physics you know a kind of a physics difficult physics so i put in two outer correctors and use all as you said now here on the relaxation remember that if you want to know the default option see that here you can go to the source code and look for transonic and see that here you are going to find this important dictionary or revisit this so if you open this one you will see that these are the default options for many of those flags that you can put in those files so see that models thermophysic flow momentum predictor transonic consistent so these two are by default false this is by default true and this one are all by default true okay so you know that you have those options there for those dictionaries uh also remember that now we're going to use a new solver raw pimple phone and see that new solver you just go phone info and you're going to get some info uh of nine okay so phone info raw pimple phone and there you have your information what it's doing also you can get information about sv constraints so see that you have it there okay find a volume constraints but if you want to know the ones that you can use with the solvers those constraints you can use it with every solver so, so see that each solver will have a help and you can go there and list the constraints okay there are many constraints implemented and see that you have the list of constraints that also you can get for, from the source code here you have it and you can open the source code and you will see how to use it there so in this case let me open my sb constraints and see that this is what we have here and just to comment something as well, the rest control D is the standard. You have access here, you see, to the adjustable kind of number and so on with some comments there. So as you go into zero, see that now to mention about boundary conditions. So all the boundary conditions, so this setup, the UP is the same, K, omega, nut, also the same, but see that you have this new one. This is a term, turbulent and thermal diffusivity so this one you just set up set this value at walls okay so all the walls that you have in the domain you set up this one in standard one and that's all okay then you can take the rest as a uh, template so inlets and outlets leave it as calculate and then the others you can put in a constraint so well probably this should be symmetry also let's see i don't recall what i'm putting there okay NT, NT, okay, I'm not using symmetry. And to mention about velocity, now I also 
using this one. So see that this is a specific boundary condition now for supersonic flows, okay? So you can define this one, but you have this, that it will add you, give you a little bit more stability. And remember, you always for an info. If you want to know a little bit more about this, put it there. Okay. Since that I have the, the key swap in my, and here you have information about this. Okay, so this boundary condition provides a supersonic free string condition. Okay, so see that you have a little bit of explanation. Okay, so this is for high speed flows. Okay, this is a thought you might be able also to set out that using fixed values, but this is more stable. See that for temperature, okay, T. You define your variables as usual, then P, and remember, it is absolute pressure, okay? Be careful, do not put zero relative pressure, but it's going to give you problems. Some comments here now about your Mac number and everything. And that's all, okay? Then K omega nu, as I say, computing in the standard way, so at the walls, you put it there, and then the reference value, you know the velocity, turbulence intensity set a level, and that's all off you go so let me run this simulation okay and it's ready to run okay so you have supersonic seal and let me go run solver okay so it's running let me open a new window okay and more lord the solver so see that at the beginning when it launched Turbulence models and see that here is reading the SV constraint and is applying all those constraints here. So at the beginning you have this impression. Remember that this one impression in this case is computed like this that it will change in time. No? Or you can fix that value and then you standard you your your standard output. See that you have my two loops there stabilizing coefficients and minimum and maximum and this is important i mentioned that always monitor this one and this see why is the importance to monitor this one because as you see at one point that this temperature goes i know to 100 kelvin you know that there is a problem there okay because for you that might numerically might happen not do mesh quality whatever okay so that's why we put that that constraint to avoid those scenarios and you get a stability okay so those are some numerical tricks see that i'm Reporting also my viscosity that is constant. So it's okay. And see that also the velocity magnitude. So remember that we put there also a limit so it cannot exceed a thousand meters per second. Okay. And that might happen sometimes, you not know, at the beginning, at the first iterations. So let's see if in this case happens. So now it's not happening. But usually, as I say, also as well, well that will happen with compressible, uh, with the steady simulations, okay? Python plot washer, and you can also monitor your residuals. And here you're going to have all the equation plus the energy equation, okay? See here that now you have it, okay? Velocity H, okay? It determines values and rho also. So usually H, should converge very well. The, that quantity, you should be sure that they, it converges well. Okay, and just to stress the numerics, okay, as you have now, uh, if you have, in the case that you have chuck waves, you should you should use you know, a very good numerics there. So look at that. This is the numerics that we're using. Everything linear win, not the strong one. But it might happen also, it might be better to use a TVD like min mod okay, or Van Lier or Super B is up to you, but see that we are in all using aggressive grading limiters of oscillations and everything. It might be a good idea to go like this for pressure, just to reduce you no know, any diffusion in pressure and forces estimation, okay? So I also recommend to do that. Okay, and see that every modification that you do will be reflected there in the residuals and you see there in that residual is reflected okay and let's wait a little bit until this simulation finish now it, should, it shouldn't be that long i don't recall the time let me open control did okay so it's running up to 0 0.2 it's almost there and then if we look at the dictionary so it's running also in parallel for course See that after running, we're doing a posterior post-processing, okay? So see that we're computing Mach number, current number, vorticity, and grad U, okay? Also, you can compute the gradient, grad raw, 
to visualize the shock wave or diff grad raw okay so you can add it you know how to do that or you can put this online in the function object it, it is up to you and actually let's see the function object yeah it's over the simulation so yeah i just have minimum maximum y plus forces and yeah we don't have the function object for the for grad row for the shield leading, but it shouldn't be a problem. So now that you have a solution, okay, it's computing. Okay, here it's computing our function object. And see that what is computing the function object is that it will recompute now the minimum and maximum now because you have that p min factor in this case. So let's launch Parafon boom, 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 build int. Okay and here you access all variables okay so see that you have your mac number density okay so see that go to the latest one and density is usually a good indication now of where you have chalk wave what it might be better now the gradient now of density you have the mac number so in this case is a mac number of two and then see that you have there and let me put and see that how it's evolving okay so all the solution that you see here, some problems there where the mesh is not super fine. So you can get a, a much better mesh and you're not going to see any more that problem there. It's not a problem, it's just due to the mesh and also the orthogonality that you have there. So let me go here like this, uh, for instance, look at that. You will see that strange behavior here. See precisely where you have no orthogonality, okay? And the supersonic now solver, so is very sensitive to known orthogonality as they mentioned that will have a strong influence in, in the Laplacian. Okay, so that is a little bit numerical diffusion that you can reduce by having a much finer mesh. So as you got gradient U can be used also as an indicator for for the chart wave location. So let let me reduce this value. Let's see. Okay, so I see that you have it there, your chart wave. And well, that's all. You have all temperature, you can access everything, monitor your case, like the walls. Remember that you can plot all, always you can plot the y plus. And in this case, the y plus, let me plot like the wall. Let's see. Do I? No, it wasn't there. It's not this one. Should be this one. And see that we have the y plus. And we have very large values. Okay, so this mesh is, is it, it is unacceptable. Now this mesh, okay, see that value of twenty thousand. That is too large. Okay, so I see that as I mentioned that usually this white plus will be very large where you have separation will have problems. So here we know that is supersonic. So likely we, we need a, a much finer mesh. And let's see that. Okay, so see that yeah, this is basically on a sector 2000 is already too much. So this is all for, 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 for this case, the post-processing. As you see, nothing changed, okay? You, as soon as you understand your physics and these dictionaries, and very important, this is if the constraints, it's very helpful, okay? It's not only limited now to compressibles, and I use it a lot, okay? Even in compressible, just to avoid at the beginning of the simulation, those, those jumps. So that's all for this case. In this folder also, you will have a second tutorial. Okay, so this is a, a lower speed uh, case where you have plumes, so just to show you what you will expect there. So here there is no transonic correction. Okay, so see that you are just expect, expecting this, you no know, heated walls and you have that plume there. So this is the animation. So these cases are tricky to get running now because usually to balance everything when you have the flow going out here, then you will have some flow entering. So usually here you need large domains to get this. Okay, so you have it there. Okay, it's pretty much the same setup. You need to set up your temperatures, pressures, whatever. And uh, as you go here, constant thermophysical as user, but we are not using, in this case, I didn't use as big constraint because velocity is a low, pressures are, are low and so on. We're using a new solver, by the way, as you enter here, see that is this buoyant that is specifically formulated for this kind of problems now, but you can use the standard one, okay? So that's all. Thank you for your attention. See you in the next module of advanced physics. Bye.